One of the reasons I wanted to have you on the channel is a lot of people are still in the thinking phase. A couple of months ago, you didn't know anything about glamping. And here you are just diving in head first. You know, you have a successful glamping business. Um, so my main question is, how dare you? Like, where do you get the gall? Like, if you think starting a successful glamping business is too difficult or costly, well, guess again. In today's video, I have a radiology field engineer turned successful glamping business owner. He started just six weeks ago and has been absolutely crushing it. He has over 35 star reviews on Airbnb, and he's on track to start his second glamp site in just a few days. And get this, he doesn't even own any land. In today's video, he's gonna explain to us and teach us how we can do the same and how the hell he's doing it. This video isn't too long and it's jam-packed with information, but still, feel free to jump around to the specific points that you think will help you launch your business and help you be the most successful. Check the description to see the exact time I ask specific questions. All I ask in return is that you leave a like on the video and a comment. It really helps out the channel way more than you would think. YouTube does not like boring content like this getting pushed out on their platform talk to me take it from the get-go like yeah okay me all right all so i didn't i didn't purchase land this time i wanted to i wanted to kind of just test the waters and see how it would go so i didn't really want to uh over commit myself to um purchasing land and, and it not working out i was looking to to rent land so i started out by contacting campsites rv sites um people that had posted land for sale. I wanted to see if, you know, maybe they would rent me a piece of their, their land. After getting a bunch of no's and people not wanting anything to do with it. Um, well, for, first I, I started out this whole thing. I was looking at tiny homes and I was looking to, to purchase a trailer and or a tiny home glamp site and, and park it somewhere. So that, that was, that was my initial, uh, entry to this whole, the whole, the whole clamping. After going through a bunch of no's, I started doing more research and I came across uh, these canvas tents, which I thought it was a fantastic idea and doing even more research. Uh, you know, the, the, the tiny homes, they go anywhere, you know, from 20 to a hundred thousand dollars. So that, that's a big, uh, that's a big expense. The canvas tents, yeah. you can get the basic setup for under $10,000, which is kind of right where, where I'm at, you know, kind of all in right now. I'm, I'm at about seven or eight thousand dollars so it costed you about seven to eight thousand dollars you started your glamping business about six seven weeks ago do you feel like that was money well spent or or like were you because I'm, I'm certain no matter how much the cost is you're going to be nervous you're going to be worried you're going to be like i don't you don't I, I, no one wants to waste any money so certainly you know eight thousand dollars is yeah. way better than a hundred thousand but I'm almost certain you don't you don't want to lose eight thousand. Right, yeah, I don't want to lose any money. Yeah. So <laughs> how have they? So in terms of of money coming in and things like that, do you feel like one hundred percent, one hundred percent, with with the way things are going, um, I, I think the re, the return on the the initial investment is is going to be great. It's going to be paid off probably. Uh, I can probably get it paid off after this season. That for for the one okay. site, yeah. So you think that you'll be able to recoup all your money back? that you put into your glamping right, business. Right, right, yeah. First I probably won't make a profit, but I, I will at least get the money back mm -hmm. of the investment of purchasing everything. Okay. And then um, could you go back to, again, how you finalize actually finding the land? Because you said that you didn't purchase land. You don't own land. So how is your glamp site set up and how in your tent business? Like, I like to water things down to exactly what they are. Um, and like, yes, we call them glamp sites and et cetera, but you're making money from a tent. Like, Absolutely. Stop. Yeah. That's it's, awesome. it's incredible. So, so the, the land, I finally contacted, um, a landowner who was, who was renting spots for RVs on a, on the property. He has, um, about 15 acres in upstate New York and he, about one, 1 1.5 acres is dedicated to, he's got some septic water and electric for, for, uh, like RVs that people don't want to come for this for, a week or the summer uh they can come park their rvs on his on his land and that that's what he's all about so i contacted him and i told him the idea that i had about purchasing a tiny home or one of these uh glam site tents he thought it was a great idea uh, i i i framed the question or just a statement that i made to him basically i told him my idea that i was interested in purchasing a uh, campus tent or 
the tiny home, putting it on his land and renting it out. And I was going to make it, I was going to make it good for both of us, basically. You know, profitable. We, we would find a way to, to make it work for both of us. So we would both be making money. Um, he was all about that. He thought it was a great idea. So this is actually something that I recommend to a lot of people, which is uh, one of the best ways of finding land to run your glamping business is go look for someone who's already willing to trade land for money, like renting land for money. So you found someone who was just like, hey, if you have an RV, come through, pay me rent, and you're good to go. So that per you're like you're almost it's almost like a hot or warm lead because you know that that individual is open to having other people on their right. Land. Yeah, and and this was just right. it was just a small portion of his land that he was he was renting out these RVs to, and the rest was just kind of open land. It was basically a, a wide open field that you know he was paying taxes on it every every year, and uh, he's basically just just sitting there. The thing is, you know, he didn't have the time to focus on the on the campus tent sites. So I, I did, you know, so he was for more, it was more focused on, on the RV business. And, uh, it's not like a huge site. He's got maybe five, uh, five sites that, uh, is, is really small. So, um, he just didn't have the time to, to focus on, on anything else. So that's why when I, when I came to him with that idea, um, you were talking about how he didn't have the time to renovate it. And I, and I was just going to say that actually that's another thing that I recommend to people, which is you are essentially trading your time and ability instead of money. So, cause you've somewhat partnered with this individual to run the glamp site, but you're the one who's able to like move things forward and to drive it because you have your right. Yeah. So, so the, the way it's set up is that, um, you know, I, I listed the site on Airbnb. I'm setting up all the, all the listings, driving everybody to the site. Um, I'm renting the land from him. When the guests get to the site, he's willing to uh, to go out and greet them and kind of show them around real quick, and then make himself available for any questions that they that they may have. As well as as I am, I'm, I'm able to communicate through the the uh, Airbnb app and and also be there for them. So they're getting kind of for, from both ends, you know, the, the messages. Um, for me and he's physically there to show them around or or you know bring them firewood or anything like that and would you be comfortable telling us what the split is because you guys have a partnership set up so how so, is the money so basically down? the money is broken down is i'm leasing the land from him so i'm giving him a flat rate for for the for the use of, of his land okay um, for, the for the season and in addition he's uh he's able to turn over the site and, and greet them. So there's a, a small fee that I, I pay him for that too. Yeah. And one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the channel is a lot of people are still in the thinking phase. And I kind of believe like, I, you know, I, I love to read, you know, I'm a smart guy, but I think that people overthink a lot. And it sounds like you just like went and got it done. Like, cause as you said, you said like, like a couple weeks ago, like not like a couple months ago, you didn't know anything about glamping and here you are just diving in head first and you have a, some, you know, you have a successful glamping business. Um, so my main question <laughs> is how dare you, like, where do you get the gall? Like, like, like what made you jump in and what made you feel comfortable? Oh, uh, well, I wouldn't have spent it if I, if I wasn't comfortable with, with, with the setup, if, if things kind of didn't all come together, uh, I probably would have been a little bit more hesitant to actually go all in. But, you know, I, I set up a meeting with, with Mark, the landowner, um, I, I went up there and I took a look around. I met him and, and right away I, I knew that this was this was a good idea, that things were going to work out. Just by him being available to help out, um, okay. the area that it's in, the land, um, and just – and also Mark's excitement about having me do something on this property. So I knew that it was, it was a home run. Really, um, so far, what has been the hardest um, the part, hardest part this business? would probably be, you know, the second you you post that listing, you're 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 on call twenty four seven. You know, this is this is your job, yeah. this is your business. Yeah. So th you need to be available twenty four seven for anything that may come up, um, especially when when guests arrive, when they're checking in, checking out. You know, I, I used to have my phone on silent, didn't want to be bothered, but now it's it's on max volume, and I'm afraid to miss anything. Yeah. On top of that, though, you have a full you have a full time day job. 
And you you don't have a, well from what I've understood you don't have like a I'm sitting in an office all day job like you're out and about going on site right so like how do you find the time like is that right be, it, it is it is it pretty difficult to... but um, so I work I'm a field engineer in radiology so I'm going from hospital to a hospital uh, working on radiology equipment which it makes it a little bit more difficult but like you said I'm not sitting in an office too with somebody staring at me all day. So, you know, I can spend five minutes to message a, a guest when they book in between, you know, doing what I have to do. Okay. Um, another part that makes it difficult is that, you know, I'm working in, in x-ray rooms and these rooms are typically lead lined and uh, <laughs> the, the service is not great. <laughs> the service is not great, you know, so. Do you even get um, service? I'm constantly yeah. trying, to, trying to find good service, connect to the Wi-Fi, make sure that I'm available. Um, that, that's a big part of being a good host also is, uh, you know, being available and having a good response rate. So what uh, advice or feedback would you have for someone who wants to be doing what you're doing? There's a lot of people that have a day job and want to start a glamping business on the side or are thinking about it, but they have all these things that are in their way. Like, oh, I don't know if I'll have time. I don't know if the money, there's probably a bunch of things that go through their heads. Um, what advice would you give someone who's just starting? I would starting? say, you know, get comfortable being uncomfortable. This is uh just just be all in. You find a way to make it work. Really, you know, there's mm -hmm. there's really there's no excuse for it to not work. Really, okay. it, it can be done. Any, anybody can do it. You know, if you're if you're really serious about it, just find a way to make it work. And, and most of all, start. That that's the biggest thing. Is do your research. Uh, make have a good plan. Don't leave it at that. Just at, at, you know, actually start. I think research and knowledge is one of the biggest things. So how did you do your research? Because how did you go, how, like, how did you go from hearing about <laughs> glamping to saying, YOLO, I'm starting a glamping site? Like all that space. Um, between, I mean, how did you do your research? How did you YouTube practice? has been a great resource. Uh, there's, there's a ton of, a ton of information. Um, you can learn, mm -hmm. a little, learn a lot, really. Um, so that just reading articles, going on Airbnb and seeing what other people have, that, that's, that's a good resource also. Seeing, you know, they have a ton of pictures of everything that they have. They have their nightly rates. Uh, and then based off of that, you can kind of start pricing things out and seeing if you can make it work. You know, run the numbers and um, you should be able to get a, a ballpark idea if, if it's going to work. And chances are it's going to work. You've been in it for a while. You've gotten some early reviews in. Uh, you have to, like, maybe you're at 5.0s across the board but have you gotten any negative reviews? And I focus on those just because it's like, I we all can clap it up. Your business is obviously going successful. So I wanna show people the two sides of the coin. Have you gotten any negative reviews? If so, what, uh, what well, were they about? What so they far, like what was going I on? Have, I've, I've had nothing but five-star reviews. I um, mm -hmm. actually today, very good day. It, today I'm gonna have my 20th guest stay yes so yep. 20 guests <laughs> in like six weeks yeah we're crushing it crushing it you know but that's, you know with, with... <laughs> yeah, that's awesome yeah yeah no i i know i know yeah but but as long you know i, I realize that tomorrow this all could be gone right it, it only takes one bad review or one negative guest experience for this all to mm -hmm. go away really so you know it, it's great you know, I, I think I, I've met everything that's mm -hmm. required for a super host. You know, and just just realize Absolutely. that this all could go away. You know, if you if you drop mm -hmm. the ball and take your foot off the gas, you know, it, it, it all could come crashing down in, in a matter of minutes. And it seems like you want to go <laughs> all in on your tent business. And again, I'm calling it a tent business today because I want to show people like they can do it too, right? So you're going all in on your tent business and you have plans of, getting more tents and putting on that piece of land. Can you talk to us about that? <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. And, and I, was, I want to thank you for that, for kind of uh, slowing me down a little bit. Because initially, <laughs> initially, I wanted to, to buy five tents and now, you know, start with five. So set up five tents and then have five different listings. But speaking to you, <laughs> you said, oh, hold on, hold on. Let's start with one, which was, which was a great idea, which was, yeah, yeah. was perfect. Start with one, get your feet wet, uh, figure out the business, figure mm -hmm. out, you know, if you're good at this or not, and then perfect this type, because th this tent, because I found things that worked and I found things that, that didn't work. So, you know, the initial setup, I probably added on another 
five six hundred dollars worth of, of yeah. you know am- amenities things like like a nicer like a rug inside or something to clean your, your feet so uh so I, i've added on stuff too so i've really i feel like i've perfected this one site and then now i'm, I'm ready to to expand yeah yeah i always tell people like set up the first one for the most part then you can learn and get like set up your processes and you know what works, you know, what doesn't, you were telling me that you were getting some user feedback um, of, of guests <laughs> or reviews. I'm sorry. I come from tech. So I call things weird, like stupid names. Um, you're getting user feedback reviews. We're getting reviews telling you, um, you know, like people needed a place to like, kind of like uh, kick their feet off so they don't drag mud inside. And you're like, Oh, okay, cool. I'll get, a, I'll get a, like a space for that. And you know, like those little things that you learn, so now once you scale up, you already learned all the little stuff and you're going to like hit the ground running. That's a good How question. Uh, so, up? well, I guess I'll tell you now that I'm, 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 I'm going, everything's already up there at the site waiting for me. I'm, I'm going up tomorrow morning and we'll, we'll be <laughs> setting up, nice. setting up an, an identical site on the same property uh, with enough, you know, enough space in between the sites mm-hmm. so everyone's comfortable. Um, so that, that's what I'll be doing. And, um, you know, I, I made a few different changes and some things yeah. that I bought that I wasn't really happy with the quality. Um, so I, I did make, make some upgrades and some little changes here and there, but uh, pretty much mm-hmm. it's going to be a, an identical site. So to get this straight, and remember, <laughs> I'm not too bright. You do some stuff in radiology or something along those lines. You decided to start a glamping business six or seven weeks ago. It's been off the charts. You're happy with the fact that you invested $8,000 into it. And within seven weeks, you're planned on investing another bit of cash and setting up a, a second glance Correct. Site yes. on your yeah. space. Yes. So now you're going to have ten tents <laughs> for your ten business. <laughs> I just wanted to say that to you to let that soak in. Um, that that that's awesome. That's awesome. A hundred percent. I would recommend it to anybody. I mean, that's, that's kind of one of the first steps after you do your homework, you do your research, uh, get with an expert. I personally don't know anybody in my town or any of my friends or family that, that do this. So find an expert that knows what they're talking about, that has, has a, a good track record with Airbnb and, and the glam sites, with whatever you want to do and, and get with them, get some feedback before I purchase anything. Before I signed the lease for the land, I spoke to you first. I, just, I wanted to get the feedback. You know, I wanted, uh, you know, j- just somebody else's input that knows what they're doing. And that's that should be top of the list. One of the first things that you do is, is cool. and, and 100%, 100% value.